All right, hockey fans, welcome to another edition of Wolves Hockey Show. Bring you weekly highlights, clips, news information, and much more on the Wolves program. This year, we got our Christmas holiday annual show. You know, well, have a Merry Christmas, Coach Coons. Merry Christmas. Yeah, little <laughs> little break here for the team, so looking forward to that. Absolutely. Looking forward to the start of 2021, too. Yeah. Now, Coach, tell me about the U14s. How did they do this past weekend? Our U14 team went 1-1, one and one, uh, beat New Hampshire East 4-3. to three. Um, and then lost to Manchester Flames. They've been doing a great job, uh, Coach Garrett, of uh, playing their GSL games, and they've been doing really well. They're actually undefeated in their GSL games, and then they've been elevating it each weekend, playing some bigger programs, playing some nationally ranked programs, and that's really helped them within their uh, ranking within, within the state and within the New England district. We're currently fourth in the New England, New England district in Tier 2. That's great. They're doing well. we got some clips we're going to show you right now. So this is some of Sunday's action against the Manchester Flames. It's an offensive zone face-off for the Wolves. They win the face-off. They get the puck to the net. Great finish by Jake Tash right there. Here's another clip from Sunday's action. Wolves would lose, would lose this game, but it was a great chance for them to elevate their play against a tough opponent. Gunderson on the floor check. He gets the puck to the D. Connor Johnson coming in. Finishes at the goal mouth. Wolves will lose this game, finish the weekend one and one, but a good showing against some great opponents. So that's a good showing by that team, Coach. Yeah, a couple of nice goals there. Yeah. What's the What's the U16 team been up to? So the U16 team, after winning the Lakes Region Midget Challenge, uh, they took a couple of weeks break, break from some game action. Uh, some of the players were able to return home uh, and spend the holidays with their family, uh, and the rest of the ones who were local continued to practice and develop. We got some clips we're going to show you in a second of what we've been doing for practices, but uh, we're really looking forward to resuming game action the first week in January. We're going to show you those clips right now. So here's a clip from our skill sessions, some of the stuff we've been doing on Tuesday nights. Tuesday nights for the 16th has been an individual team practice. Uh, we've been covering a lot of power skating, a lot of uh, one, you know, individual skill work, and uh, we're looking forward to implementing that stuff come January we're back to games. On Wednesdays and Fridays, the 14s and 16s combine for team practices. And it's a great opportunity for our U14 team to elevate their game and practice against some older kids. For the 16s, they have to set a good example and they have to uh, set the pace in these practices. Here they are doing a regroup drill that ends with a, either a 1-on-0 or 2-on-0 in front of the net. So coach, with the 16s, in, uh, in January, they'll have their Granite State, New Hampshire State playoff. In February, they'll have the United 2-1 Hockey League playoffs. So they got a lot of things to look forward to. Who impressed you the most, some guys on, on U16? Oh, I think, think a bunch of guys. I think uh, Micah Crumpins looks good um, out there. I think uh, Charles Day has been a really good player. So um, a lot of games to look forward to, and um, I'm sure you guys are looking forward to that. Absolutely. Can't wait to get back to game action. Definitely. Coach, what's the EHLP been up to? Well, we've been talking for a couple weeks about the P, how they're kind of on, on the cusp of good things happening. They've been landlocked and playing just in the state of New Hampshire against the same opponent, who's a pretty good team. And, and uh, we said, oh, they're on the cusp of getting, winning some games. Well, it finally paid off. Uh, this last week, they had three games, and they won two out of those three, including knock, knocking off uh, the New Hampshire Avalanche, ending their 12-game winning streak. We got a couple clips we're going to show you right now. So here's some action against the New Hampshire Avalanche in the game that ended their win streak. Nice play in the offensive zone. Four check to get the puck back, get the puck to the net. And rookie forward Nick Potenza, a 2003 birth year player, buries the goal mouth scramble. Uh, the Wolves will win this game 6-3. to three. Uh, They really played great throughout the contest. They outshot the Avalanche by about 10 shots. And the power play was deadly, scoring four goals. So the P team's looking solid. Coach, who's impressed you? Uh, and who do you think is going to have a big second half on that team? Uh, well, I think a lot of guys have, have done well. I think probably it's a tough time for the break for Coach because they've been playing really well the last couple of weeks. Um, and then I think, like Nick Potenza, he saw his first first junior goal. Um, I know his high school isn't happening, so it could, could be a big, uh, big second half for that guy. Absolutely. Now, Coach, tell me about the EHL team. Yeah, EHL team is, is now in break as well. Um, team won four out of six in December. 
Um, but a, a team that's been going for, for the last five months with no break. So it'll be a good chance to rest and, and get ready for the new year. Absolutely. There's, there's 18 organizations in the EHL. There's only six teams that are above 500. And the Wolves are one of those teams. So looking forward to maybe making the power rankings one of these one of these weeks coming up. Here. Who knows? I don't know how you get in those rankings, but we'll see. <laughs> we got some clips we're going to show you right now. And here we have a highlight from a game against Seacoast Spartans. This was Ricard's Jelenskis to Donnie Feldman, right back to Ricard's with a, a nice finish. Ricard Jelenskis has been playing really well this past month. Lots of goals, lots of points. When this clip was uh, from the previous matchup against Seco Spartans overtime, again, Ricard's Jelenskis comes around the net, scored the game winner in that game, and the Wolves won four to three. Here's a highlight from the last last game before break. Big hit from Nick Bosch. It leads to a two-on-one. Dennis Danilov passed to Gabriel Jadoin and back to Danilov for a nice goal, and that'd be the game winner for the last game headed into break for the Wolves EHL team. So coach, the Wolves have won three of their last four headed into the break. They won four or six in December. Last time we were here, we talked about you've been getting some really good goaltending, but they haven't had, had the wins. Now we're getting the wins. Who's playing well? Well, I think we, uh, the main thing is the team's been scoring a lot of goals. Um, so up front, Donnie Feldman, Sergey Nisimov, and Ricard Jelenski's line has really been scoring a lot of goals and it's it's certainly helped the team win some games here absolutely that line they win every shift yeah yeah they've they've uh teams really relied on them for offense here and they've but they work hard and and uh, the goals were going to come and then finally this past month they started to go in absolutely now we're gonna have an interview coming up with a uh, member of our ehl team he's a three-year member of the program uh and he's a defenseman who's who's done really well for this organization andreas matika all right, with me now for the interview is Andreas Mateka. How's it going? It's going pretty well. Welcome to the Wolves Hockey Show. Thanks, Coach. First time? Oh, yeah. Yeah, first time. Uh, third year in the Wolves program. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and where you're from? Um, originally from the Czech Republic. Uh, moved over to Georgia, played there, and then uh, Coach Trimble found me, picked me up, and been here since. So this is your third year in the Wolves program, but what initially led you to, to coming to Laconia? Um, so before I was uh, in Laconia, I played a year for the Northern Cyclones, where I uh, feel like I improved my skills uh, and I improved them enough that I was able to uh, play and compete here. Great. So what are some of the things that you like about the Wolves hockey program here? Uh, I mean, one of my favorite things is all the ice time. There's a lot of time to improve. Um, I mean, even now we have a break and we're able to come here, go to the gym, go on the ice, uh, work out. You know, we can screw around a little bit, but then we're also getting a lot better. Now, what? Uh, this is your first year on the EHL team. What kind of uh, goals do you have for the season? Uh, I mean. One of the biggest goals, obviously, is just simply improve, plain and simple. But my main goal would be to go on playing college after this year. Okay, great. Now, what? Uh, let's take us inside the locker room a little bit uh, here. Okay, let's. Uh, I'll ask you a question, and you give me which which teammate. So, let's say uh, who's the funniest guy in the locker room? Funniest guy. Oh. Wernley or Ennis or Landry, they're pretty funny. Probably Wernley. John Wernley, funny. John, John Wernley's pretty funny. Okay. Uh, let's say what guy on the team, uh, give us like a like a fact somebody might not know about one of the guys on the team. Well, uh, man, fact that someone wouldn't know. All right, I'll, I'll ask yeah. a different question. Yeah. What? Yes, yeah, I'm John Blaine. You often are seen driving to the rink with Ricards Jelenski. He's, uh, you know, we like Ricards. Nice guy, good player. Uh, doesn't say too much. What are those car rides like to and from the rink? 
Uh, one of the biggest uh, part of the one of the biggest parts of the car ride is uh, Richard's plays some music, and he always uh, blasts some uh, heavy Russian hard bass music, which is pretty pretty fun. It's an entertaining ride. Okay. All right, that's something we didn't know for sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, Andreas, what are you looking forward to um, 2021, the second half of the year here with the EHL team? Um, I mean, I'm just looking forward to getting back on the ice, having a lot of fun with the guys, getting better, and just winning. Sounds good. All right, thanks for joining us, Andreas. Happy to be here. Thanks, Coach. So great interview there with Andreas. He's grown by leaps and bounds, I think. Uh, and when he came here, he's as a – First, first year junior player, he was, uh, you know, playing U16 the year prior, so it was a big job. Um, what impresses you about Andre? Yeah, I think every day he works hard, and I think he's somebody whose skills has improved tremendously over three years, and that's because he's he's there every day trying his best, and um, like he said, he's, he gets a lot of ice time and a lot of opportunity to get better here. Yeah. Now, I mean, Coach, what do you think of the percentages um, – you know, that he's gotten his Christmas shopping done? Probably 0%. I could agree with that. It could be yeah. anywhere between 0 and negative. He's a smart guy. He does well in school, but I don't think he has his Christmas shopping done. <laughs> I, yeah. I agree, Coach. Now, uh, we, had, we had a tour drive this past weekend. Um, fans coming in the building, they can get in free by bringing uh, different toys into the building. Uh, and they went in the name of Max Gagnon, and he donated to the Make-A-Wish Foundation down in Manchester. Uh, he also saved some toys, and, and, he, and he's taken those down to um, Boston Children's Hospital. Coach, what kind of uh, atmosphere does it create when we do these kind of special events? Yeah, I, I think it's great. I think, obviously, this year has been more challenging to do stuff like that, but uh, to be able to do something like that, I think, is, uh, you know, for, for a great cause, and we had some good crowds here that, that weekend, too, so that was nice. Yeah, I was commenting to Max's dad, Mike, uh, who's a big supporter of the program, and he uh, he said how the year is going and all this stuff. And I said how different it was because we, in years past, we always did these different events, uh, and we can't do it this year. You know, they couldn't can't do Pumpkin Fest because Pumpkin Fest didn't happen. We can't do Christmas Village because Christmas Village didn't happen. We can't do uh, the Multicultural Festival because that didn't happen. So, looking forward to 2020 when we get back to not only the Wolves hockey but also get back to some some normalcy. Definitely. Now, Coach, upcoming events. Tell me what's going on for the next couple of weeks with the Wolves. Yeah, so uh, all the teams are basically on break. Uh, a few practices finishing up. And then uh, December 30th, we have the Wolves Youth Day. It'll be the U U10, U12, and U14 um, players. So they'll have a chance to be on the ice two, three times and, and work out. And it uh, should be a fun day of hockey. Absolutely. Um, I think one of the coolest things we're trying to do with that, too, is, uh, you know, as best we can, kind of uh, have the kids here and, and have an experience just like our, our Wolves junior kids have. So the U10s will come to the rink. Uh, they'll be on the ice 9 to 9.45 doing skills with Coach Kuhns. Uh, the 14s will be on from 10 to 10.45. Then we're going to have a workout. I think they're going to bring a bag lunch uh, and hopefully get some guest speakers for the uh, some of the Wolves junior kids out there. And then they'll combine for uh, team practice in the afternoon. So be some be some fun stuff. Definitely. Looking forward to it a lot. Now, Coach, uh, we wanted to pay some special thanks. Uh, special thanks to our fans and our host families. Uh, our host families have gone through, through a lot. You know, the kids arrived here after quarantining or getting tested uh, in August. They didn't go home for Thanksgiving. Uh, tell me about, uh, you know, what the host family experience at, at meant to the Wolves as an organization. Yeah, I'd say we, we couldn't have any of the teams without the host families. Like, it wouldn't be possible. So most of the players, almost all the players come from out of town and need a place to stay while they're here. And, uh, you know, simply the the teams wouldn't exist without, without the host families. So definitely very, very grateful for all those families. Absolutely. Uh, and we also want to thank, you know, we have a connection with the New York Islanders, uh, was able to provide all our U16 with uh, team jackets, which are two Coach Coons' left, and also with the coaching staff. So special thank you to the New York Islanders. Great jackets. Wear it on the bench every game. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, we got a couple – we got some clips we're going to finish the show with. Uh, 2020, even though we've endured a lot with uh, COVID-19 and cancellations and reschedules, 2020 has been a great year. Uh, 
all of our teams made the playoffs in the 1920 season at all levels, from EHL, EHLP, all the way down to our four teams. Um, we had a great summer of recruiting. We had a great start to the season, uh, and right now the teams are rocking and rolling. We got teams that are nationally ranked at the youth level. Our junior teams are uh, right in the playoffs, and they're doing well. Coach, what do you think about uh, the prospects for 2021? Yeah, I think think it's looking good. I think uh, you know, program has been improving every every season, every day. Uh, we try to get a little better, and and uh, no different for next year coming up. We got a clip we're showing you of uh, 20, 2020 highlights right now. are able to recover though as O'Brien takes it to the neutral zone across for O'Gorman. Now it's here come the Wolves back. Daniel off and Joe doing two on one chance here and they score. For more information about the New England Wolves you can go to any-wolveshockey.com